Hello and welcome back to Mr. Price's online classroom. Today in lesson 25, the political developments of Imperial China, we will be talking about two different Chinese dynasties, the Tang Dynasty and the Song Dynasty. So when everyone is ready to go, we will go ahead and get started. 25-2, 25-3. Tang relied on a large bureaucracy, and this is familiar to us because they are not the first Chinese dynasty to also rely on a bureaucracy. A bureaucracy is the people that collect the taxes, the enforce the laws. It's like a system of rankings of higher and lower that kind of manage the empire. They, this bureaucracy also oversaw building and irrigation projects on top of collecting taxes and enforcing laws. And an irrigation is supplying the land with water. So very important things, trying to figure out a way to get the Yellow River and these other, other rivers in China flowing through so everyone has an ample amount of water. These bureaucracies also were in charge of the military as well. And obviously it's important because these are big positions. Collecting taxes, enforcing laws, irrigation, building, military. You want people that are qualified for these jobs to be in charge of these jobs. You don't want someone that has no idea what they're doing because you could see what kind of a disaster that would be. So the Tang Dynasty is going to try to figure out the best way to get the best people for the job. Before the Han Dynasty, emperors used an aristocracy. All right, so we talked about the Han Dynasty last lesson here. And an aristocracy is ruling class of noble families. And then the Han Dynasty started implementing that examination, if you recall. So before that, they were just picking the richest, the noble families, the aristocracy. All right, these people are born into wealth. And it doesn't mean just because someone is wealthy, it doesn't mean that they know what they're doing. It doesn't mean that they're knowledgeable. It doesn't mean that they're truthful. So the Tang Dynasty, they're actually starting with this aristocracy of the ruling class of the noble family, but they soon realize that they should take things out of the Han Dynasty's page and start using examinations. So obviously, I think to most people, you can see why an examination makes a lot more sense than just giving it to the most richest and the most noble of families. Uh, this, this job is too important to just give it by someone's position of where they were born and who their family is. So the, as we mentioned, the, the Han Dynasty created a civil service exam. And a civil service exam is a test given to find quali qualified candidates for government. And this test is actually a little bit different than you would, might think because it actually also included poetry amongst administration and legal issues. So want to know uh, about your administration and legal knowledge, about are you fit for this job? And poetry is kind of for that critical thinking. Do you understand problem solving? Do you understand pulling information that is not absolutely clear and kind of breaking it down and figuring it out? And this is based off of the work of Confucius. Confucian is Confucius is China's great philosopher, his the most famous philosopher. Confucius we'll talk to, we'll talk about a lot. He really pushed the way of forward thinking in ancient China or in in the middle ages of China. All right. So we have this civil service exam that was created by the Han Dynasty that we mentioned last lesson. And the Tang Dynasty is going to try to use this and implement this. Tang eventually used these exams, but they started off with that arist aristocrats, as I mentioned. And aristocrats gain position by marrying into the families. All right, that's how they. That's how someone becomes an aristocrat if they're not born one. They marry into a rich family and marry into a noble family. Uh, the tests also favored aristocrats, even if someone was trying to take these new exams that were coming in to, to prove their knowledge and merit. 
the test favored aristocrats because you needed money to either go to school to study for these tests or just have the books to study for these tests. And if you don't have money, well, you're not going to be able to study and you're going to be behind the eight ball. So these aristocrats could, even if they weren't just handed the job, they could study because, and they had more of an advantage because they had the money to buy the stuff for it. Uh, everyone was open to take the test except for actors, merchants, and beggars. At the time, these three people were kind of the low level of the food pyramid here or the food chain. So everyone could take these tests to try to find a government job, part of the bureaucracy, as long as you weren't an actor, a merchant, or a beggar. So the Tang Dynasty came to a halt. It lasted from 618 CE, so after zero. We're talking about after zero here. 618 and 907 CE. And a peasant rebellion ended the Tang Dynasty after almost 300 years of rule. Uh, and China split apart once again, just after like the Han Dynasty fell apart. After the Tang Dynasty part, China split apart. The North was controlled by five different military dynasties. And about 50 years later, a, a dynasty called the Song Dynasty emerged. And the Song Dynasty is one we'll go into detail here in a second. And they eventually reunited the Empire of China. So as I mentioned before, China collapses and reunites several times over history. So the Song Dynasty is to try to pull it together. And they are the successor to the Tang Dynasty. The Sung Dynasty also wanted qualified candidates just like the Tang, but they took it to the next level. They thought there could be improvements that could be made upon for this examination. The exams were far more available to everybody, and they were a little bit more rigorous. This created a meritocracy that, that they were available for everyone. A meritocracy, I want you to break down this word merit right here, ocracy. So merit meaning the rule of officials proven by merit. All right, so it's right in the word. Don't get too overwhelmed by this word. A meritocracy is just, hey, you have this government job if you prove that you have the merit, if you have the knowledge, if you have the skill to have the job. And this new test wanted that forward thinking of Confucianism. That's why we talked about uh, Neo-Confucianism influenced the test. And that is blending Confucius's thoughts and the way he teaches with the religions of Hindu and Daoism. And we'll talk about more of the religious aspects here in the future. But so we have a little religion and also Confucius and his forward thinking blended into this test. So we have people that are really outside of the box thinking and being part of this bureaucracy under the Song Dynasty. This is important. They wanted to uh, they wanted to really build up their empire. They wanted to uh, thrive during this time and they can't thrive with people that are unqualified for, for the jobs. So Confucius valued five important relationships, and this is pretty interesting. There's a value in these relationships, so I'll name the five. He values the relationships of ruler and subject, father and son, older and younger sibling, husband and wife, friend and friend. So his thought about these five relationships is the first person that I mention in each, in each group needs to be kind to the second person. So a father needs to be kind to his son, but the second person, so the son, needs to show respect to the first person, in this instance, the father. The only exception would have been the friend and friend. They needed to show equal kindness and respect towards each other, but that was his way of thinking. He thinks that if you are kind, if you're in that first person in that group, that the respect will come hand in hand and good relationships would be built. It was a belief in China that Confucius, studying Confucius and his thoughts and his Neo-Confucianism made people more rational 
more knowledge, using more knowledge instead of emotion, using thought that made sense. They would think through the think through these things with facts, think through problems by addressing the problem head on instead of you know, it's it's instead of reacting emotionally. All right, so Confucius studies made people more rational, made them more fit for the job, and that's why they had Confucius thoughts on the examinations. The, so the Song in the Song Dynasty created state-supported schools to try to get people more into government, more knowledgeable from the birth, to get more, just more intelligent in general. Even the lower class had more access to attend, meaning more lower class people made it all the way to the top to the bureaucracy by passing examinations. But these tests were pretty rigorous. I mean, the first, first you must pass a local test, and then you had to pass an imperial test where candidates were locked in room for more than one day. I'm mean, talking like several days to take this test to prevent cheating. They had a whole methodology of an honest examination for you. But if you were if you passed you were rewarded, but it was very difficult to pass these tests. I want you to imagine yourself now being trapped in a room for 3 days or for example and having to take a test. Uh pretty intense. So and this is what the Song Dynasty held their expectations up to. So as I mentioned, few passed these tests because they were difficult, but you were available to retake the test if you did fail. Uh, the job was far from the hometown after if you did pass. And the reason why they did that is because if you were managing, say, say you were live in Akron and you got a job, a government job in Akron, they didn't want you to benefit your family and friends only or be biased towards them. So they gave you a job further away. For example, just say Cleveland. They We gave you a job in Cleveland, so you can't be uh, you can't hand out these benefits or be biased towards your friends and family. After about three years, you're evaluated to see if you need to, if you can get promoted or not. Uh, it was a nice reward for people that worked hard and that were did show that merit. And the benefit of this being government this is why people wanted these jobs is because you didn't have to pay taxes and you did not have to serve in the military. Serving the military in the Middle Ages is you know, well, they, how often they fought, so obviously not exactly a delightful position. And excuse for paying taxes, who does not want to be excused from paying taxes? Nobody likes taxes. So two really strong benefits here. All right, so we have the Tang and Sung dynasties really trying to increase the merit used in China for their bureaucracy. Okay, we are all set for today. Until next time, so long, everybody.